Hello and welcome to this review of my Razer Black Widow Ultimate 2014 edition. I hope you like rants because <laughs> this is going to be one. I'll get to the toothpick later. I've previously done a review of the original 2010 model and for some reason a whole bunch of people told me that it actually used Razer switches instead of Cherry MX Blue even though I very clearly showed in the video that they are MX Blues but <laughs> whatever. Still, I had loads of requests to do an actual Razer Green model, and now someone's donated this one, so I can finally oblige. This one is actually third hand, but absolutely mint, as the previous owner only used it for half an hour, and the first one didn't use it at all, despite reportedly buying it for 250 euros plus shipping and import fees, which puts this in the roughly 350 euros or 400 dollars ballpark. As I mentioned in the previous video, they changed a fair bit about the keyboard over the years. For example, this one uses monochrome green backlighting, while the older one used monochrome blue. But some things are still the same, so I won't go into too much detail here and there. For example, the build quality is basically the same. It's a plastic rimmed case and metal mounting plate setup, and it weighs almost exactly the same as the original at around 1350 grams sans cable. It's got a USB pass-through, audio, jack sockets, etc. They did change the finish from glossy plastic to matte though, which I'm sure a lot of people will like because whenever I show a glossy plastic keyboard I always get a lot of cries of pure disgust in the comments. I don't mind too much myself, but I can see why some do, particularly because glossy gets dirty a lot quicker. One problem with the matte finish is that they made the lock lights, which are already rather cryptic symbols to start with, shine through the case, which makes them really blurry and even more illegible. I mean, look at this, what the bloody ass fuck is going on here? The caps are the same cheap, laser ablated ABS ones with possibly the ugliest font I've ever seen on a keyboard, and that's saying something. It really goes to show Razer is the champion of keyboard uglification, and this sort of keycap printing tends to have very low durability as well, sometimes as little as a few months before damage occurs. The switches are, as mentioned before, Razer green switches, and judging by the rather venomous remarks many of my viewers have uttered at them, I wasn't expecting much to begin with. But still, I gave them the benefit of the doubt, as well as the usual week of tryouts. Razer green switches are clones of clones of Cherry MX Blue switches, developed by Kai Hua and based on their own PG1511 clone switch series, which use a similar, easily recognizable square top housing as these razors. Compared to Cherries, they have a slightly higher lifetime rating of 60 million key presses versus the standard 50 million, but otherwise they're fairly similar. Nowadays, a slightly different version is also being produced by Greetech, and those use a more classic shape of the top housing, and they're apparently rated to 80 million cycles, although it's dubious what good that would do if your keycaps fail within a fraction of that. Now, although I'm not known as the greatest fan of Cherry MX switches, I think they're rather mediocre, I have said on several occasions that of the MX lineup, Cherry MX Blue is my favourite, because, horrendous clicky noise notwithstanding, at least they're actually tactile, which is something that, for example, MX Brown can't boast of. Now these Razer switches feel almost exactly the same as Cherry MX Blue, with one exception, and you can probably guess where this is going, but yeah, the tactility is missing again. Just... Uh... If you look at the force curve, you can see that it's one of those switches that's actually more tactile on the upstroke than on the downstroke even, a bit like Futaba MA switches. This gives rise to a rather weird key feel. It's not outright unpleasant, but with very little tactility and a really annoying clicky noise, you're kind of left wondering what the point of these switches is. I've read they have minimally less hysteresis than Cherry MX Blue, but this really doesn't salvage the situation in my opinion. But honestly, of all my frustrations, those things were by far not even the worst ones. In fact, my really bad experiences with this thing started almost immediately. When I first got this keyboard, I'd started playing through Diablo 2 again, one of my favourite games of all time, only to find out that they put the function keys as a layer over the media and backlight keys instead of the other way around. 
And as Diablo 2 players will know, your skills are, by default, mapped to the F keys, which makes this very annoying indeed. Now, I think this is because this is a Mac layout one, and I guess Macs don't use F keys or something, but really, couldn't they have just put a Mac to PC dip switch at the back or something, considering how much this thing costs? I mean, I really think this Mac layout is less than ideal for gaming, which this keyboard does advertise itself for. And if you have to use both a Mac and Windows, and I think that's not that uncommon, you're just fucked. So one of the first things I did was take off this keycap and immobilize the FN key with a toothpick so that the F keys got fixed, even though this looks like the absolute embodiment of retardation. Now another issue that stood out immediately was that the F keys are shifted abnormally to the right, which is also precisely the reason why the previous owner immediately ditched it. Now seriously, what's the point? Why break what's been working perfectly fine for over 30 years? Another issue I immediately ran into was that because this is a Mac model, the Alt and Windows keys are swapped, and possibly the only key more common in Diablo 2 than the function keys is, you guessed it, the Alt key, so I kept bringing myself back to Windows by accident. One of the reasons I hate Windows keys, I can't stand those little tossers, just take them off of my keyboard. Of course, the keyboard comes with a gaming lock, like all gaming keyboards nowadays, but the shortcut is really weird. Normally it's FN plus Windows, but that didn't work, so at first I had to fix it by just taking off the Win key cap to prevent myself from accidentally pressing it. Later I found out it's actually switched off with FN plus right control, or on Windows versions, FN plus F10. Just why, Razor? Why, why, why? Now, after about four days of playing Diablo 2 in a really annoying way with this thing, it got even worse. The majority of F keys decided, out of the blue, they just had enough and stopped working altogether since. Now, at this point, I'd like to remind people that the board had had, in total, only about four days of use on the clock and it was already malfunctioning. Now, please someone tell me, what's the point of buying a keyboard with greater durability, whatever that means, and switching to a supposedly higher lifetime switch if eight of them stop working within the first week. In fact, some other parts of the keyboard just randomly stop working from time to time too. I mean, is this a joke I'm not getting or what? Just work, you fucking excrement experiment. Oh yeah, and the keyboard constantly, and I mean constantly, gets keys hanging, you know, refusing to switch off after you stop pressing them. And it's not just one or two keys that are bad, the whole board does it. I mean, what controller chip is in this thing, a dead hamster? Even my really cheap-ass vintage keyboards from 20 years ago didn't get any of this. Later, the thing that really brought my piss to a boil was when I started going through the specs pages and the manual because I was trying to figure out how to get the on-the-fly macro programming going because what I found there was just too much. Now, I'm no stranger to marketing bullshit, but let's just look through the tech specs of this model. And yes, this is the page of the 2014 model. So we've got 10 key rollover anti-ghosting. My long-term viewers can probably already guess what's going to happen with that one. Fully programmable keys with on-the-fly macro recording, which is the thing I'll get to in a bit. Razer Synapse 2.0 enabled, as if that were a feature instead of a useless ball and chain. And 1000 Hz ultra polling. Now, what the fuck? is ultra polling I hear you think. Well, according to them, ultra polling is a technology developed by Razer that heightens the frequency of the keyboard reporting actuation information back to the computer. But 1000 Hz is standard for mid-budget keyboards, so it's nothing special at all. It's just a made-up word designed to make a standard feature sound like the dog's bollocks. So anyway, while trying to get the on-the-fly macro recording going, I tried some random things because the manual doesn't actually list how to record the macros. So I tried this button, which is the macro button, and then a macro key, and then strings, or the other way around, you know, just some standard programming techniques, and none of them worked. So I went online to look it up, and apparently the on-the-fly macro recording only works when the driver is installed and running in the background. Well, that's great, so now I have to download this Razer Synapse bullshit, and I even have to have it running in the background like some douching voyeur. I hate that sort of thing. Why do I have to do that? There were programmable keyboards back in the early 90s that had this squared away better, for fuck's sake. 
See this thing? It's a Focus 9000 from 1992. Want to know how to program it? Well, you press the program key plus the key you want to program. Then you put in what you want to say, such as F-U-C-K, and you press the key again to finish. Bam! No software needed, no bullshit, and it stores it right in the keyboard memory. Meanwhile, I'm already half an hour in trying to find out what to do and having to make a Razor account or whatever, and I haven't even programmed one micro, some on the fly, that is. And no, of course you can't get away with just throwing them a fake email address, you have to verify first because it's absolutely vital that they know your real email address before you can program a macro. So you make this Razor account, download the shit and log in. Okay, now what? So again, none of this is in the manual, but thankfully I found it somewhat online. You open the program, go to macros, press the plus button, press record, input your string, press stop, go to keyboard, select a key, assign the key to a macro, and then select the macro you just programmed, and then press save to save it. Now, barring the fact that this took me three reboots to get this far, because not only didn't it work the first few times, but this also completely locked up my keyboard, but how the fuck does this qualify as on-the-fly recording? Well, the answer is, this isn't the on-the-fly mode. The way that works, again not in the manual, I had to find this on yet another website, you press FN plus F9. Well, that's wrong because it's not on F9, but I gather you're supposed to press the macro button, whatever. You input the string, fine, and then you press the macro button again, and then the key you want to assign it to, such as this one. Sounds simple. But no, again, this just outright fails and I haven't gotten it to work yet. And yes, this also completely locks up your keyboard until you replug it and it still hasn't saved any macros and it does this every time. And for anyone who's wondering, yes, this is the official Razer Master Guide that's linked on the support page for the 2014 version of the Black Widow Ultimate. And again, even if it did work, why not put it in the manual? And why the fuck do I need this wanktastic synapse nonsense to do any of this. So by this time I had completely had it, but I hadn't even gotten to testing the advertised 10 key rollover anti-ghosting yet. But I happened on this little gem on one of the FAQ pages that went, does the Razor Black Widow have anti-ghosting capability? How about N key rollover? To which they reply, yes the Razor Black Widow features a gaming optimized key matrix that allows the recognition of up to six simultaneous key presses. So actually, the answer is no, it doesn't have N-key rollover, not yes, it has a gaming-optimized matrix. They even say N-key rollover only works with a direct connection to a native PS2 port, which is false, by the way. But apart from that, it got me really suspicious because they just went on about 10-key rollover anti-ghosting, while here they're talking about up to six key presses. Now when I first tested this, I actually ran into as little as two key rollover. But with all the constant errors this board keeps getting, that could have been due to anything, and I haven't been able to duplicate that instance. I also ran into the advertised six key rollover limit twice, but now that's gone as well. And in fact, it does appear to actually have ten key rollover. On a good day, I mean, you know, if Neptune isn't in the wrong zodiac sign or something. So in conclusion, Razer should be ashamed. How dare they pitch this worthless piece of non-functional and subpar shit poop to gamers, and that at a premium price too. You know, I just never want to see this utter sack dictator of a keyboard again. It's fuck ugly, the switches are crap and fail almost immediately, as well as constantly. The programming function is a complete disaster, and the layout is utter shite. It really goes to show that Razer don't know how to make a keyboard good, just how to make one ugly. That's it for this review slash rant. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard. The keyboard isn't actually responding at the moment but whatever.